Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's a snowy day today. When is it not? But it is today. All right, as we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be identified to me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Good times. Well, today I'm going to keep talking about fasting and bring in John Climacus to the conversation, which is the image over there. Okay, let's do it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your family, Lord, that through the chastening effects of bodily discipline, our minds may be radiant in your presence with the strength of our yearning for you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there, till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From all their distress, God rescues the just. From all their distress, God rescues the just. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. From all their distress, God rescues the just. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. From all their distress, God rescues the just. The Lord has eyes for the just, and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. From all their distress, God rescues the just. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them. And from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. From all their distress, God rescues the just. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, In praying, do not babble like the pagans, who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive men their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. 
But if you do not forgive men, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, happy one week into Lent, and we get the rest of the gospel from Ash Wednesday. So remember, the Ash Wednesday gospel has this removed from it, what we just read. I, I realize like that's not the kind of thing that you know you should remember necessarily, but it's also one of those interesting tidbits. So if we go through the whole gospel, I, I'm not going to read the whole thing now, but just kind of remember how that goes. Ash Wednesday, we heard, Jesus said to his disciples, take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you. So on. And your father who sees in secret will repay you. Then, in praying, do not babble like the pagans who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, this is what you heard today, because your father already knows what you need before you ask him. Instead, say, our father. And your father who listens in secret will listen. <laughs> you know, and then going back to the other gospel, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and the street corners so that others may see them. Then finally, when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. So all of these things put together, we have a very clear indication that the visible part is not the good part. <laughs> that these kinds of actions should be kept in a certain way hidden. Or at least they, they should be done for God and not for other people to see them. Obviously, clearly. Well, as we continue to talk about fasting this week, from our reflection on Sunday and yesterday and now today, I want to bring in a couple more details. Now, so far we've talked about fasting with this really rather remarkable kind of conclusion, like we got in Isaiah 58, that if you fast correctly, that is to say, not simply for the sake of being seen, oh look, it's the same thing that Jesus says, then you will see God, because God will appear, which is, again, that, that really kind of really remarkable much bigger than expected kind of conclusion that Isaiah says very, very clearly in chapter 58. And it's funny, because if you don't do it to be seen, then you will see God from the passive voice to be seen or not to be seen to the active voice, you will see. All right, an interesting little grammatical thing there. But it also betokens this rather special message, which is that a good fast leads to the presence of God and God being present to you. More importantly, God will say, here I am, is what Isaiah says. Okay. So the idea of the fast is pretty clear. Obviously, if we fast, then we are not being otherwise distracted by the other things that would make, take away from being able to listen or see God. In a way, fasting is, of course, not just food, but also in general, it kind of frees up the senses to be sensible to God. All right, fine. That all makes sense. But what I want to do today is bring in John Climacus. So this picture up here that's been here the whole time, it's kind of a scary picture. It's a very ancient image of a ladder going across and a bunch of angels going up the ladder, except it's the angels, actually, the angels aren't on it. It's a bunch of monks going up the ladder and there are a bunch of angels there, but some of them are demons and some of them are taking the monks off of the ladder and they're dropping down into like a giant mouth of a dragon down below, which is Satan. Okay, great. Really delightful image. <clears throat> it's called the Ladder of Divine Ascent, which is also incidentally the name of the book by John Climacus, The Ladder of Divine Ascent. One of the things that he 
does in this book, which has 30 chapters, 30 rungs of the ladder in the picture, it doesn't matter is to really emphasize how important that particular rung of fasting is. In fact, there's several. And the idea of fasting for John Climacus is a little bit more emphatic than we might be used to. So for Climacus, gluttony is the prince of passions. So Obviously, like how we want to arrange the various sicknesses of the soul, there are different points that are more important than others. For example, in the West, we really underline pride. Pride is being kind of the root and the beginning of all the other bad things. You can also, in certain times and certain places, for example, a Cappadocian father that we're gonna hear about next week at our Lenten retreat, underline sloth as being like, this is the beginning and the end of all of the other vices. For John Climacus, writing a little bit later and a little bit farther to the East, um, we have this idea that gluttony is the beginning and the entryway for all the other vices. Why? So for him, gluttony isn't just eating too much or whatever too much. It's enjoying the comfort that comes from it. <laughs> it's an interesting kind of, an interesting detail, an interesting little subtle thing, but then it starts making sense. When you enjoy the comfort of things, then guess what? The search for the thing becomes a search for the comfort of the thing and definitely not for anything else. So the fasting idea is, well, let's remove the thing. And so we have to search for comfort somewhere else, preferably somewhere good, actually. All right, so to read a little bit of John Climacus, here's what he has to say. Laziness, talkativeness, familiarity in speech, jesting, facetiousness, contradiction, a stiff neck, obstinacy, disobedience, insensibility, captivity, conceit, audacity, boasting, after which follows impure prayer, whirling of thoughts. From these, says Climacus, comes waves of filth and depths of unknown and unnamed impurities. On the other hand, fasting is the prevention of lust, the uprooting of bad thoughts, deliverance from dreams, purity of prayer, the light of the soul, the guarding of the mind, deliverance from blindness, the door of compunction, humble sighing, glad contrition, a lull in chatter, health of body, agent of dispassion, remission of sins, the gate of paradise and its delight. Obviously, Climacus is talking from a very different perspective than ours, in a different time too. But there's a couple hints in there of some very useful aspects. So the glutton is one who finds comfort in various things, the things of the world. But the one who practices fasting also has, did you catch that one? This beginning of dispassion. All right, so dispassion is a weird word. We think we understand passions enough, but what about dispassion? Well, there, there are two words I'm thinking of in English that don't mean exactly what they sound like, but are pretty cool. Dispassionate and also disinterestedness. Sound like, especially disinterestedness, like there should be some kind of negative thing. But if you look it up, actually it's disinterestedness in self primarily. That is say, a lack of selfishness. Dispassionate means the same thing, not selfish. And so this idea of fasting becomes very much the beginning of being not selfish. Okay, that begins to actually follow in a little bit more because of this whole idea that we're already beginning that, well, if you do these things secretly and not for the sake of showing others, like that gospel from Ash Wednesday and the gospel from today, which is the same gospel, then you're doing it for a better reason. 
so God can see it. Okay, fine, but also for the sake not of one's own pride. Again, pride comes into it. After all, we are the West. But not just that. The benefit of fasting really does become being able to be attentive to the Lord, being attentive to the matters of the Spirit. Spiritual actions, spiritual activity do not have the same kind of shape as these are the things I did today and these are the things I experienced today. They may be related, but they're not the same. Spiritual intuition, being able to follow the guidance of the spirit, being able to listen to spiritual understanding, like, you know, that benefit of prayer, actually, when God actually is present to us in prayer, takes a very subtle kind of listening. And really, fasting is necessary to be able to put oneself into that way of listening. Obviously, it's not about like these the self help, the self help kinds of ideas, but rather, it's a mode that gives us this particular result. In a way, it's not the pragmatic part. It's not about what we eat affecting our minds, but rather being open to actually seeing God. Again, that promise from Isaiah 58. In all of these things, we have a lot going on. Now, on Thursday in church, I'm going to talk more about this fasting bit, especially the warning not to do so for others. But as I was talking about before Lent even began, it's important to make sure that our Lent doesn't become a Lent for others. <laughs> that, you know, the sufferings that we endure, the penances that we do become a penance for other people simply because we are a pain to be around. Well, the same is also true for fasting. Fasting can become a thing which is meant to be seen. And that's always to be avoided. Again, what is the direction here? Aside from our Lord tells us very clearly, in this chapter six of Matthew that we're reading from today and from Ash Wednesday, the idea of hiddenness is more important. Then also it's this idea with us personally that we're not supposed to be doing this simply for the desire just to be seen. Believe it or not, sometimes people do. But it's also something we need to be aware of and on the lookout for. A good Lenten practice should not necessarily be noticeable. Sometimes you do end up noticing it, of others, that is to say. But it's not necessarily something that's supposed to be there on the top, saying, hello, look at me. I am righteous because I am doing these practices. No, that's not how it goes. With fasting, particularly, there is this promise to see God. Good. And that's where the righteousness comes from. From actually listening to the Lord, from actually seeing him, from actually being with him. Again, once you say it, it suddenly sounds not particularly very interesting. Oh, holiness is being with God? Yes, it is. All right, great. That's what I wanted to mention. As we always do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he'll hear and answer us. For the Holy Father's prayer intention this month, that those suffering from terminal illness and their families receive the necessary physical and spiritual care and accompaniment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that during this season of Lent, we may grow in prayer and in closeness with our Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the who bear the marks of shame or guilt, for all who need healing of interior wounds, that during this season they may find that healing through the cross of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that the light of Christ may guide us all, that all people may experience his peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And through the intercession of St. Monica, for all our friends and families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. May your faithful be strengthened, O God, by your blessing. In grief, may you be their consolation. In tribulation, their power to endure. And in peril, their protection. Through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. Happy Tuesday. Tomorrow is a different kind of day entirely. It's the anniversary of the dedication of the cathedral. So a whole bunch of other things. All right. God bless you all, and we'll see you later.